Did you catch all that? What do all these clips have in common? They're all using LiDAR technology. But what exactly is LiDAR? Like the third eye of Lord Shiva in Hindu mythology, which sees beyond the visible world to understand the underlying truth of the universe, LiDAR opens a new eye for us, allowing our machines to perceive their environment in a way previously thought impossible. Yes, 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 get on with it. From this new eye, we can chart a course through unexplored territories, traverse busy city streets with autonomous vehicles, or even navigate the final frontier, space. So picture this, it's the late 1960s. Bell bottoms are getting their 15 minutes of fame, Americans learned where Vietnam was on a map for the first time. Oh no, yeah, NASA was working on lasers. As humanity faced its first golden age of mastering the skies, a problem pilots struggled with back then was landing planes safely when they couldn't see the ground. Luckily, America funded everything and anything that sounded cool back then. You mean I actually have freaking sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their freaking heads? No. These ones didn't come with sharks or melt anything, but it could tell pilots how far from the ground they were before it was ouch time, even in the worst conditions, which is a big deal for those who are fans of landing. I didn't know you could fly a plane. Why, yes, land, go. And that's how LiDAR started becoming a thing. Well, how does it work? Simply put, it shoots a laser or lasers, waits for the light to bounce back, and calculates the distance based on a consistent speed of light and time. Do this a thousand times per second, and you've got a 3D map of anything you want. But it didn't stop there. As tech has evolved, miniaturized versions of LiDAR are in your phones, household robots, even some new cars, helping them understand and navigate their environment to serve you better. Yeah, did you guys know this little white thing is LiDAR? I didn't either. What a time to be alive. And my personal favorite, it does Indiana Jones stuff better than Harrison Ford could ever dream of. X marks the spot. LiDAR is unearthing ancient cities all over the world, remapping famous sites like Angkor Wat and uncovering lost cities claimed by time and nature in the Amazon to reveal a never before seen understanding of our past. And as we look to the future, who knows where LiDAR will light the way next? Get it? Because it's a bunch of little lights. Yeah, you get it. This is LiDAR, I'm Devin Doan, and you're watching The Big Biz Show. digital content. All right, Big Biz Show. Great to have you along here. 110 million TV homes strong every weeknight. There's a reason we're talking about LiDAR. It's because of a company called AI, uh, which stock symbol is LIDR, much like LiDAR. Uh, Matt Fish is the CEO. We've had, a li we've had AI on uh, in the past, but you know, Matt, we just did that package uh, in, you know, in, 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 uh, in response to you coming on the air here. Uh, how close are we? What is LiDAR? If you're gonna have to give a definition of what LiDAR is, um, you know, talking about uh, uh, this, this, this uh, technology. Talk about what it is and what are you guys are doing over there. Great. Well, I love the video, first of all. Uh, great uh, uh, overview of it. Here's how we see it at AI. Uh, all of us are living in a world today that's connected. We're all connected to each other through the uh, miracle of the internet. And we believe at AI that this sensing capability, uh, which is LiDAR, is going to do for mobility or what the internet has done for connectivity in that uh, autonomy or the intelligence that goes uh, that's uh, we talk about every day chat gpt all these capabilities which will make mobility autonomous um, requires uh, a way to see the world so and lidar is that way to see the world in the world of autonomy and uh, allows us to see in actually four dimensions the three dimensions each of us see in, as well as speed. That's our fourth dimension. And these are the things that are necessary to bring about this new level of autonomy and also safety. Uh, that's the eyes uh, that go into the intelligence face of the autonomy equation. So let's, let's, talk, about, let's talk about automotive LiDAR, because I think that's the one that's most easily for, sort of understood because in most new cars with your, with your uh, um, uh, sensors that you have in the front of your car when you're using, uh, your cruise control. There's a reason that your car will stop, or your, you, it'll, it'll get jumping when it gets next to lines or other cars. I think that's the most the, the simplest form what lidar does. But there's a there's a much bigger picture here when it comes to automotive lidar. Correct? We're talking about self-driving cars potentially in the future, right? Yeah, that's right. And uh, as we've talked about in some of our public communication, automotive is our go-to-market platform, uh, so to speak. Uh, and this is because it's just such a tremendous opportunity to improve safety. Uh, for example, pedestrian safety and the sensors that are available in the cars that everybody drives today uh, 
they work great in a lot of situations, but uh, they can't see in the dark sure. uh, in many cases. And uh, this is a problem with pedestrian safety, for example. So we see LIDAR now being integrated to what's called Advanced Driver Assistance Systems, or ADAS, to help improve the safety, the ability to see further down the road when driving at higher speeds. And uh, this enables the car to sense what's going on and react more quickly. And this leads to be able to, you know, be more autonomous, if you will, in autonomous driving as well in the longer term at highway speeds. You need to see really far. Matt, Matt what's the key differentiator with, with AI versus other LiDAR companies? Right, so a couple things. Uh, first is being able to see uh, far uh, down the road in a number of uh, uh, incredibly challenging uh, situations. We see farther down the road than anybody else. Uh, 300 meters down the road, which is critical for driving at highway speeds. Mm -hmm. um, the second piece, life in automotive industry is tough. Uh, you need an incredibly reliable system to pass the torture test that is driving around a car with potholes and bumps and winter weather for 10 years. We are incredibly reliable. Our product is optimized for the automotive space. We've taken or introducing a new technology uh, based on micromechanical systems that eliminate moving parts uh, from the system, and that makes us incredibly robust. And then the last piece is what we call reconfigurability. You have to be able to, this is a learning device. Uh, it needs to adjust and learn over time mm -hmm. uh, to be autonomous, if you will. So there's a big software component. That's the reconfigurability piece. Our LiDAR is reprogrammable real time uh, as the automakers learn more about the situation that's happening on the road for millions of miles of driving, we're able to update, just like your iPhone, over the air sure. uh, to uh, allow the device to continuously learn. Hey, Matt, before we're a little short on time today, but, but I, and I do want to have you back because it's so interesting. But talk to us about your business model. It's a little bit different than, than, than other business models in the, same, in the same space. That's right. So our business model is built on a foundation of moving quickly, innovating, yeah. and providing the latest and greatest of what the automotive industry needs quickly. Okay, and so one of the big pieces of heavy lifting about taking these historically large and more expensive devices into the form factor and the cost structure that's needed, um, there, there's, a, there's a manufacturing uh, part of this and we have uh, what's called a licensing and royalty driven model yeah. where we partner with a tier one provider like Continental, uh, they do the heavy lifting on the manufacturing side we collect the royalties from this based on a reference design. It's almost, it's almost like that Dolby model back in the 70s with the stereo and the noise suppression. Listen, ah, Matt, we're out of yeah. time today. Listen, pal, I want to have you back. His name is Matt Fish, CEO, AI is the name of the company. LIDR is a stock symbol on NASDAQ, LIDR. You can certainly go to AI.AI. We'll put that up on our website. He's okay confused. That does it for us. Sully, Costa, Big Biz Show. Curl the, the credits. We'll see you tomorrow.